In exclusive documents leaked to that park place, it seems that the Disney Parks Company is struggling a little bit with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. In fact, in changing it from Splash Mountain, they want the ending to be the opposite of Splash Mountains. We know that and a lot more here on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place. I'm here with Mr. Vash Guy and Mr. Culture Casino. Gentlemen, take a seat on the couch. No, take my seat. How's it going, guys? Doing very well. I'm very interested in what we have regarding Tiana's Te Bayou Adventure. Now, if anybody's seen Pro's video, great, because I was asked not to see it. We have put this off so that you may get a genuine reaction for maybe both of us. Culture, have you seen Pro's video? Oh, no, 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 no. I have not seen it. I um, I have to tell you, I, uh, I, I became a genuine commodity. Uh, when I didn't uh, actually watch the video, at least according to Jonas. So I'm ready to watch it with you. <laughs> well, uh, so we're not going to go through Pro's video. Pro has an excellent oh. video. But uh, the, the focus here for me is to get you two experts here on the theme park space. Experts on Splash Mountain on both coasts here. You guys know more about this space than anybody that I can get a hold of. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, here we are. Uh, so I wanted to talk about this. We, we, someone has generously provided that park place with a, a, a large number of documents uh, that help us to understand what has been going on within Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And you've seen, if you've been watching the Lorena Creole channel, you saw a bunch of Imagineers uh, monitoring log flumes going down the ride. There were a few people in those log flumes. It seems that sometime in mid-April, maybe around April 15th or so, there were a bunch of Imagineers doing initial testing on those rides with people in, in, in that day in April. And um, internally, it seems that they are telling their outside people, and when I say outside, I mean outside of Imagineering, going to their like group of executives, they're telling them there are going to be tons and tons of figures in this ride. That messaging seems to be a little off because we've been able to confirm that large numbers of those animatronics that were removed from the ride, and, and of course, if you follow that park place, you know that uh, there were certain Imagineers who took glee in destroying the work of uh, Tony Baxter and those other Imagineers who worked on the original Splash Mountain ride, those uh, Mark Davis animatronics, and of course the uh, Mark Davis uh, copies that ended up on the other coast there. Those animatronics, which are supposed to be, if you're following the plan, were supposed to be replaced with something else in order to get that massive number of animatronics described by current Imagineering as critters galore. Well, it seems that while there's a part shortage on animatronics, animatronic engines in particular, many of those engines were taken out and instead cannibalized and used over on the Country Bear Jamboree refit. Now, the question I have, if you have a massive number of animatronics in the ride, and there is a shortage of animatronics, possibly leading to a delay of the Disneyland version of Tiana's Bayou Adventure, why would you be removing animatronic parts and using them in other attractions? Just curiosity there. Uh, your initial thoughts on that, and uh, is there some angle here that I'm not thinking about. Well, I, I will say that I'm confused because uh, most of the parts required to move things are readily available and or easily buildable um, unless they're doing something unique. The linear actuators and, and the, the various forms of actuators are, are, are something you can order right now if you even go to eBay. What parts are they staying aren't there and what parts can't they print? I've heard of this where they'll use parts for other attractions. For example, I think Horizons, a lot of those audio animatronics were used for various pieces of like Carousel Progress and so forth. Right. Um, I, I've heard of using assets that oh, yeah. have been uh, maybe discontinued, let's say. Uh, but, but this is a strange one. And from what I'm gathering here, some of those figures in the ride, at least coming to Tiana's Bay Adventure, might not be all that complex. That would be in line with some of the things that I saw. I wasn't necessarily going to get into this, but uh, it seems like some of those small critters, which, uh, by the way, we are now hearing that the focus of the ride is on, uh, by the way, the, but the lights will light up. Uh, the eyes will light up and uh, move back and forth. So it seems like either tiny little screens or maybe some kind of lit up eyeballs. I didn't quite get uh, an answer on what that all will be, but uh 
it, it seems like a large portion of the ride will be dedicated to Tiana and Louis um, searching out additional members of the band for a Mardi Gras celebration. So the original plot of finding special ingredients, I don't know if that's like the start of the ride and then they change it here, or if there is a, a subplot about special ingredients, but it seems like the plot of the attraction is now more focused on getting animal critters for the band. That's that's interesting because the first plot that I heard for a replacement to Splash Mountain involving Princess and the Frog was Louis the Alligator finding his trumpet. So <laughs> we've gone from finding a special ingredient to now finding a member of the band. Uh, I'm guessing for a Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras celebration at the end right there. That is really, really fascinating. We've been on the hunt for something this entire time, and we can't quite decide what that is going to be. That's a very good point, because, of course, the the public statements that have been made about this is that that Tiana is a member of some kind of oh, sorry, the owner of some kind of co-op. How you own a co-op is, is of course, interesting because it's kind of a commun a small level communist thing where everyone owns a piece of it. But if it's Tiana's, that implies ownership, you know, but to each their own. It now sounds like uh, they're they're gathering people for a band. I don't think Tiana played an instrument in the uh, in the movie, but uh, she was, of course, around musical people the entire time. Uh, the, the next thing I want to talk about is the music for the ride. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to save that a little bit uh, more towards the end. It seems that as you uh, go go through the ride, they're saying there's going to be a massive number. Critters galore was the quote that uh, I was not supposed to hear here as we are going through our sources. They want the ride to be fun the entire way through. Culture, do you have something to say there? Well, I mean, you can put creatures on screens. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, especially if you're using uh, Bayou Magic, which sounds like it's projection fog. Projection fog and animatronics, I'm not sure how those two things are going to interact together, especially if you have a large felt alligator that's uh, going to be uh, hanging out uh, for hopefully decades to come. I mean, Splash Mountain was 1989 and it was 2023 before uh, they demolished. They destroyed it. Yeah, I, I'm i having trouble with all of this because I, uh, again, if if we're using electrics everywhere rather than nitrogen lines, this could be a problem. I would agree with you because fog generally is uh, mist, you know, last time I checked, and, and electronics and mist don't necessarily uh, interact well together because especially in Florida, you have fluctuations in heat creating condensation. You would tend to need to keep things cool. I... I would imagine I'm going to trust them to do a good job on preventing that and the mm -hmm. problems with humidity and everything else that comes along in Florida. But I've trusted them to do a lot of things recently that they haven't done successfully. It's a fairly good point. I mean, they, they had a contractor put in the, the guidelines for uh, Rise of the Resistance upside down. And that is apparently why that ride shuts down as frequently as it does. Um, I, I don't know if they would ever stop that uh, ride and decide to do a large refurbishment on it. It seems like there might be a puck buried in concrete that is pointing the wrong direction. And uh, that's 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 difficult to remove. But let's focus on Tiana's by sure, adventure sure. Sorry here. about that. So yeah. uh, I've, I've seen some additional details. Mama Odie does appear as an animatronic several places in the ride, as we know from from Imagineering videos that have been released. It also appears that she she will be on the ride as a projection, uh, as an animated projection on several parts of the ride. And it seems that the the final lift hill, this, this is where it deviates from my previous understanding of the ride. Because the, my previous understanding of the ride was that there would be original music, new stuff for this attraction that didn't necessarily come from Princess and the Frog. And it sounds like they have now changed the phrasing to focus more on the music that is specifically from Princess and the Frog. It might be orchestrated differently if I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt there, but it seems like it is it is that Randy Newman soundtrack that is, of course, was sung by all the individual people that were in the film, the cast of the film, not just Randy Newman. I won't grace you all with a Randy Newman impression right now. But as you're going up the lift hill, it's dig a little deeper and, and there's uh, flying flamingos everywhere. And as you go up and you go up and go up, instead of a buildup to this thrill of a 50 foot, 52 foot drop, it's going to be Mama Odie. And there's some question about whether it's an animatronic or whether or not they have not had time to put an animatronic. So therefore it's going to be a projection map. One source and only one source described it as a sheet at the top of the lift hill. 
as a B mode or something like that with a projection on the sheet. So if it's that, then that's a little disappointing. And then it's fun, fun, fun. You're supposed to be clapping along the entire way before the drop as you are supposed to be turned into a frog as you go down the lift hill. I'm sure that this is a story concession as opposed to a literal transformation into a frog. But uh, it seems like they'll be pulling back to the original story here to turn you into the uh, maybe the animal bandmate that they've been searching for all along the way. Hmm. That's really that's, interesting. That's... I've I've heard some. I, I always wondered how that last scene was going to work because that scene where I think previously Bray Rabbit was tied up and the fox was looking to eat him. Uh, that was always a very th a shallow scene, let's say. And so when you see this big audio animatronic Odie, it's like mm, I don't know if that's going to necessarily fit there. It turns out it looks like it won't. And it's no surprise that projections be used extensively in this, given that Trader Carter who has really made her career off of imbuing attractions with digital projections, whether it be any engine's adventure or Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway. Uh, it, it makes sense that they would go into that direction at least a little bit. Uh, but it, it sounds like a little bit more than they are letting on culture. You were going to say something just that, I mean, that's an awful stretch, right? And, and, and even more hollow than the other storyline that, that, you know, Bash was just referring to. I, I, I'm still not convinced that this is a, a, a ride that's scaled for little girls that you know are just in love with princess tiana i don't well, think it was uh, is it little girls above 50 centimeters well exactly and i think that's some of the problem but i just i don't know the story seems rather hollow and maybe more shallow than the previous one where you know obviously uh the rabbit is trying to talk them into throwing him, him into the briar patch that's right that's right you know now, so, I, I, I've heard a lot of indications that they don't like those quote unquote book report rides at uh, Disney Imagineering. And I think that might be a dirty word around there uh, because they don't want to do this is the movie now told in in a ride form, which, by the way, I, I, I do think that's what a lot of guests are, are looking for. So maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but but I've seen several Imagineering conversations. I won't tell you how I've been privy to them, but I've seen several Imagineering conversations saying that they do not want to have a book report ride. It's the kind of thing that makes me think that maybe Imagineering is getting in its own head a little bit. Like they have these little, the one time I heard this was a bad thing, so we need to avoid it forever kind of thing. I mean, technically, I don't, I don't know if you can necessarily even have a book report ride with this attraction because of obviously the implementation of voodoo and so and and some things that maybe uh, some Imagineers want to steer away from. But if you look at like Tokyo, for example, and their new Frozen attraction, which took a a different path than the other Frozen iterations, it you I guess you could say it is a book report attraction, but it is achieved at least more effectively, a story that plays out through that attraction than the pre prior Frozen iterations that we have seen. Book report attractions get a, a dirty, uh, they get a dirty look, I'm sure, uh, especially notable Imagineers who have called them out for being what those are. However, if done successfully, if executed highly, it can be both in line with what the guest expects from an attraction like that, while also being uh, a satisfying experience. Um, for those creating it. I think that that's what they achieved in Tokyo. Right. I'll, I'll point out the Beauty and the Beast ride. Uh, I am mm. amazed by that ride, not because of it, its deviation from the source material, but because of the Imagineering concepts that they, I'm, I'm not going to point out where, but they use Pepper's Ghost in a way that is truly amazing in the Beauty and the Beast ride. Uh, you would have to look up footage of it online in order to see it. I don't think this is an American attraction, by the way, for those of you who might be wondering what I'm talking about. So the, the the book report concept, I don't see that as a problem as long as they innovate within the concept, within the structure, innovate. That is, of course, the uh, conceit we're looking for here. Do you guys have any more comments before we wrap this up? I am curious what all these creatures are going to be. I'm curious exactly how many screens we're looking at. Sounds like an awful lot. And I'm curious how in any way they have upgraded this attraction. Those are those are the things I'm curious. The only thing I can think of is that that Mama Odie animatronic looks really, really cool. Uh, but with that, we want to throw it to our commenters. What do you think of this abbreviated version of the Splash Mountain Tiana's Bayou Adventure leaks here? Uh, do you have any questions as to what's going on? We can't answer them because of sources and such. But if you want to leave them in the comments below, uh, maybe we could, or maybe uh, one of our fellow commenters could uh, answer them for you. Uh, with that being said, though, please like this video if you like this video and 
consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.